Hi guys! Today I'm reviewing the Philips Indoor Smokeless Grill. It's 1660 watts, measures 21 inches across, 14 inches deep, and about 6 inches tall. This is the die cast aluminum grid. It's non-stick. The cooking surface is 13 and a half inches across by 7 and a half inches. The unit weighs about 16 pounds. The power cord is about 37 inches long. This grill uses infrared technology to cook your food. An instruction leaflet. There is a chart with the type of meat and how long it takes to cook. There is a recipe book with recipes for vegetables, meat, fish, and fruit. There are glass reflectors on both sides and they guide the heat up towards the grid. The drip tray on the bottom stays cool so there should be less smoke. The control knob has one temperature for cooking which is 450 degrees Fahrenheit or 232 degrees Celsius and a keep warm setting at 250 degrees Fahrenheit or 121 degrees Celsius. So there's no adjusting the temperature while cooking. This is keep warm. This is the on or standard cooking temperature of 450 degrees Fahrenheit. To turn off, just put the knob back to zero. With this unit, you get the cooking grid and the drip tray. The drip tray just pulls out. To use, have the drip tray in place and the grid on the base. The grid simply sits on the base. Plug it in and turn the control knob to keep warm for two seconds, then turn the knob to the on position. Let this heat up for six to seven minutes. There's no lid and you should not use a lid or foil on this grill because that could cause the unit to overheat. The manual says don't look into the light of the lamp, which is kind of hard since you have to see the food. The light may bother some people, especially if you have sensitive eyes. After cooking, you can leave the food on the grill and choose keep warm if you want to serve it later. Before cooking a second batch of food, make sure you empty the drip tray. The drip tray stays cool, so there should be no smoking, unless you're grilling greasy food like sausages. Some fat could splash onto the sides and burn, so use a vent or exhaust fan. The grill is getting very hot and I can feel the heat even though I'm standing away from it. I'm gonna cook two boneless skinless chicken thighs that I've marinated. Just make sure to drip off any excess marinade. I've also got two turkey burgers. You could fit about six burgers on this grill and six pieces of chicken. I'll also grill some onion. You can see the nice grill marks. Perfect grill marks on the turkey burgers. These have about 7% fat in them and I did add a little bit of olive oil to the mixture before I put them on the grill. Beautiful grill marks on the chicken too. The onions are done. You have to really watch the vegetables because of the high heat. It will have grill marks on it, but it'll be very dark, so you do have to take them off quickly, otherwise they'll get burnt. The burgers look ready. I'm gonna take them off. You can see they have grill marks on both sides. The chicken looks good. I'll put some bell peppers on. There is a little bit of smoke, so I can't say it's completely smokeless. Chicken's ready to be taken off. I love grilled pineapple, so I'm gonna do a few slices of the pineapple. It's really healthy dessert. It's better to cut your fruits and vegetables into bigger pieces so it's easier to turn and they don't fall through the grid. A few tips. If you're grilling sausages, put a few slits in them so they don't burst. Remember, this grill is very hot at 450 degrees. The pineapple gets done very quickly. Don't use too much oil in marinades. If all that oil gets on the grill and drips, it could cause more smoke. The peppers are soft. Whatever meat you're grilling shouldn't be thicker than a half an inch or 1.5 centimeters. It's best not to grill breadcrumbed food on this grill. 
We'll take the pineapple off. I don't know if you can hear it, but there is some splattering of the grease and there's definitely some smoke. I wouldn't say it's very smoky, but there is smoke. I'll go ahead and turn the unit off. Let this cool completely before cleaning. The drip tray is cool, so you can pull it out. And there's a lot of grease on the tray. The bottom of the tray is hot, so don't put it directly on your counter. That's a pretty healthy plate of food. And everything looks really good, with the perfect grill marks. Pineapple is nicely cooked. You can see the peppers are soft. The peppers are perfectly cooked. This is the thicker piece of onion, and although it has grill marks on it, it's not as soft as I would have liked. The thinner piece of onion is soft and it's nicely cooked. The chicken's cooked perfectly. The turkey burger is also cooked nicely. Even though the meat doesn't have that much fat in it, it didn't dry out. It's still juicy. You can follow the guidelines for the cooking times in the leaflet. You do want to watch the food because you can't adjust the temperature of the grill and it cooks at 450 degrees, which is pretty high heat. Depending on what you're cooking, you can even take the food off the grill a few minutes before the suggested cooking time. As for grease splattering, there is splattering over here and on the base over here. There was also a little bit splattered onto my counter right around the base. There's more grease splattering on the narrow ends here and you will definitely have to clean up all four sides inside. As I was cleaning the unit, I found that the glass part was not too difficult to clean, but the narrow metal parts on the sides are very difficult to clean. To clean, unplug the unit and let it cool down. Wipe down the grid and then put it in the dishwasher or hand wash with warm soapy water. The drip tray can also be wiped down and put in the dishwasher or hand wash. You can soak both of them in hot soapy water for a few minutes if there's any stuck on food. Don't use any metal scouring pads. Dry the grid and drip tray before using the unit. You saw how this Philips grill worked. If you want to try out this unit, I've put a link in the description below. As always, I hope you found this review helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe for more reviews so you can see how products work before you buy them. Thanks for watching.